What is going on everybody? My name is Tatro and today I'm going to be making a beat with no gear, just my laptop. Let's check it out. All right, so the main reason I'm trying to do this is because the question I get asked the most is what gear do I need? What gear should I get? I want to start making music, but I need gear. And I just want to try to show you that you don't necessarily need gear. And if you're waiting for gear to make you more creative, well, then you're already starting from not so great of a perspective. So I'm going to make a beat and I'm just going to use my laptop and Ableton Live. Now my laptop is a MacBook Pro, which is a pretty expensive high-end laptop, so I'm going to limit my to four instrument tracks so that this project could pretty much be created on any laptop that can run Ableton. The other gear you see on the table are just my headphones, they're Bose headphones, and my Tascam recorder that's recording the audio for the session. You obviously won't need the recorder unless you're creating a video like this, and you could swap these headphones out for any headphones really. So I've already chosen my four sounds and I want to create sort of like a moody trap beat, the stuff that's kind of really popular right now. So, I picked four sounds. Let's go over what those are. I've picked a pad sound. That's going to be sort of like a drone. I've picked a keyboard sound. I've picked a drum kit. And I've picked a higher bell sound. These sounds all came in the Beat Tool Sound Kit, which you can get on Ableton.com. It's free for Ableton Push users, but it's available to buy for all other Ableton users. Now what you noticed before is that I'm using my computer keyboard to play the notes, because I don't have any gear, I don't have a MIDI keyboard, so I've got to use this if I want to play in my notes. I could draw in notes, but I like playing in my musical ideas a lot more than I like drawing them in. In this session, we're going to use a combination of both drawing in notes as well as playing them in with the computer keyboard. And you can enable this keyboard functionality by clicking this button up here. That's the computer MIDI keyboard toggle. You can toggle it off so you don't have to worry about that. Or you can toggle it on so you can play notes. So I'm gonna start with the pad sound and because this is sort of like a moody trap beat that I'm trying to make, I've set my tempo to 76, which is kind of slow, and I'm deciding that I'm gonna play in the key of D minor. Now, when you're looking at this keyboard, home row, which is A, S, D, F, and so on, are essentially your white keys on the piano. So you have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then it goes up to D. Semicolon, and so on, doesn't work. Then you also have your black keys appropriately placed. So you have C sharp and D sharp on W and E. And then you have F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B flat on T, Y, U. So since I'm playing in D minor, I'm going to start on here. And that's a D minor chord right there. But for the pad sound, I'm just going to play Ds at octaves. Now, since this is going to be a drone that goes through my whole track, I'm actually going to drop this instrument down an octave, and I can adjust the octaves by hitting Z and X on my computer keyboard. So to bring it down, I hit Z. And you can see at the bottom, it's telling me what my computer keyboard octave is at. C0 to D1, C1 to D2. I like that sound, so I'm going to go ahead and record that. Now I've recorded two bars, and I'm just going to go ahead and make sure my notes are cleanly on beat one. And that's going to be my drone for my track. Now I'm going to go ahead over to the piano keyboard. The 
The drone is a little loud for me right now, so I'm going to bring down the volume. And I'm turning on the metronome so I have a clearer sense of the time. something. Quantize that. It sounds a little strange, but I might keep it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shorten that to a four bar loop. Get rid of these notes at the end. Since I'm playing in D minor and I want to keep it in key and keep this track a little more simple, I'm going to adjust the two Bs that I played and set them to different notes. off for now. Awesome. I really like that loop. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a drum clip. So I'm going to do a combination of playing the notes and also drawing the notes. So to start, I've just created a one bar clip that's empty. And now I'm going to hit the session record button so I can record into that clip. And I'm just going to record a simple kick snare pattern. snare pattern here and since this is only a one bar loop doesn't leave much room for variation I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the loop to be four bars so now I have that same kick snare pattern spread across but now I'm gonna draw in some hi-hat notes so I'm gonna find my closed hi-hat and just start drawing those in Nice even pattern. Let me make sure that's the rate I want. Yep. Okay. Just these notes and duplicate them. All right. But what's important in this style of trap music is I want to have some stuttered hi-hats, which means as I'm looking at this grid, I need to make the grid narrower. So let me go ahead and select narrow. And I'm going to shorten this note, shorten this note. And now I can fit notes in between these notes, which will give it a nice stuttered sound. I can go even narrower. And as if you notice, as I zoom in, it just gets smaller and smaller because I select narrowest. I'm going to select just narrow for now. And I'm going to shorten these notes again and then have them get progressively smaller as we lead up 
to beat one of bar two. And now I'm just gonna sort of add different stutters and rate changes in here to keep it interesting. And I'm not always gonna do it up to the one. So for instance, for here on bar three, beat two, I'm gonna lead up to that beat with a stutter. Let's hear how that sounds. Add another one here around the third beat of bar four and just real quick notice the way Ableton labels bars so we have bar one bar one beat two bar one beat three bar one beat four and then we have bar two and the different beats are symbolized by the decimal place so 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.4 is equivalent to beat one beat two beat three beat four as you zoom in, it obviously gives you deeper subdivisions. Let's go ahead and add this last stutter in. I'm zooming in to give myself a smaller magnification, but I'm not doing too much repetition. Let's hear what that sounds like. That's good enough variation in the hi-hats for me. Now I'm gonna just play around with the drum kit and see what other samples there are to make this sound a little more interesting. Probably won't go with a crash. I could actually do one of those somewhere. Somewhere where there's not already a stutter. Let me go ahead and add it there. But right now it's coming through a little loud. So I'm gonna click on this drum channel and I'm gonna expand it so that I can see each individual sample. That one I'm going to lower that a lot because it's a pretty abrasive sound and it'll have no trouble coming through on its own. Then I'm going to also pan it a little bit to the right, get it out of the way. I might even make it shorter and then I might get rid of the hi-hats that are there. So this will sort of replace the hi-hat. Now you notice that as I click on sounds, it's playing them out loud. And you can change that just by selecting this headphone symbol here. That allows you to just audition sounds. And I like that for when I'm not playing with a keyboard because I'm not just actively able to hit like a drum pad. That's a cool little roll that I'm gonna add into the end, sort of a lead up to the loop. Ooh. That was an accident, but I am going to use that sound. I'm just going to add one of them. I'm going to add it right there. All right, let's figure out where to add that cool block sound. That's where I want it. Right there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the audition sound off. And I'm continuing on with the pattern. You notice that it's in bar one, and then it's on the and of four. So one and two and three and four and. Two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three, four, and good. That's there. Let's see if there's anything else for us to add. Hmm. That.
I'm gonna add that on the end of four, but in bar two, where the little wood block doesn't happen. And I'll probably only have it happen once. So the vocal sample is gonna happen on the end of four, but in bar two. And I'm only gonna have it happen once because I think using vocal samples like that can be really cool. But if you overdo them, it just takes away everything that makes them cool. So this is our basic beat. And the last layer that I'd like to add in is this lead sound. But I'm still a little too low. So I'm gonna turn the octave up, find my D minor chord. So we have C, D. Now let's just try to improvise something over that. It does take a little bit of getting used to using the computer keyboard, remembering what keys are where, but that's just a little adjustment you have to make. I'll go ahead and just try to record something. I know I was falling a little bit behind in that playing, but I'm just gonna go ahead and quantize it using Command U. Listen to it back. Now that I have four layers, I can really make a quick track in arrangement view just by dragging these loops over. So I'm gonna select them all by clicking on the first one to the left, holding shift, clicking on the last one to the right. Now I have all these clips selected. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna drag them a little bit and hit tab. Now I'm in arrangement. I'm gonna make sure all the clips are aligned with the correct channel. Boom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit this play button up here to make sure live knows I wanna hear what's happening in arrangement view, not what's happening in session view. All right. So, these three tracks all had four bar loops, but the drone had only a two bar loop, so I'm just gonna duplicate that so it's even. And obviously, I'm not gonna start everything at once. I'm gonna go ahead and have the drone enter first, then have the chords enter. The drums won't enter until much later. And then I'll have the lead enter here. Now I'm gonna cut this, and I'm just gonna have this officially start here. Keep the drone going throughout the whole thing. And then have the beat drop there with all the layers happening at once. Now, this is only one section of a beat because I wanted to make this tutorial relatively quick. But in reality, I would go ahead and create an A section, a B section, a C section over in session view with different scenes. Create build-ups, create a verse, create a chorus, some variation. And then I would bring all of that over to arrangement. But for now, I'm just going to create a quick 30 to 40 second track that kind of shows you what you're able to do here. Now, let's go ahead and play what we have. Alright, that's pretty cool. One thing I noticed is that in my clip, my kick didn't come in on one. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that that is on beat one. Sometimes when you're playing notes in live, it can go a little bit before beat one and the quantization doesn't quite catch it, so it doesn't land there. So just adjust that. Make sure it happens. Cool. And then we can do a little bit more with the sounds here. 
than just have them be normal and unmoving. So I'm gonna start with the pad sound. And one of the simplest things to do is to fade in. You can do that through volume, you can do that through filter. I'm gonna do it through filter. I'm gonna click on the filter cutoff knob, which you can see is now adjustable by using this red line here. It's a dotted line and faded right now because we don't have any adjustments added to it. But I can add points on this line by double clicking. And now I can adjust where those points are over time. So the filter is now starting at a zero and let's hear it fade in. I can have it be a little more extreme probably. Let's just hear what that sounds like. I like that shape. Also now when I copy the clip, it will paste that automation. And I really like that movement, so I think I'm just gonna duplicate that across the whole intro here. Now the next adjustment I definitely need to make is having this bell sound fade in. I'm gonna do that with volume. So I'm clicking on the volume parameter over here and I'm selecting the clip I would like to fade in. And then if I hover my mouse right below it, it's only gonna adjust that section of the automation, which is perfect. Because then I can make sure that the fade in lasts all the way up until beat one of bar nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more node here and then drag it down so that we have a solid fade in. But much like the pad sound, I'm gonna do a filter as well as a volume fade in. I'm gonna start it here, get rid of this, and we're good. Now I am just going to add a little bit of a cutoff. I'm, I'm going to have some tracks drop out right before the drop. And I'm going to do that by just cutting them back. But now if we listen, you notice that the reverb hangs over which is okay sometimes, but for this effect, I really want it to totally cut out. So I'm gonna select the volume parameter on all the tracks. I'm gonna select this portion of time by clicking and dragging. And then I'm gonna pull down the volume. So it totally cuts off. I don't have to do that for drums because they didn't exist before this. I'll do it right here. Let's check that out. Okay, that was a little empty, so what I'm gonna do now is extend the drum loop back so it hangs over that section. I'm gonna hit Command E to cut it so I can just focus on this little section here. Zoom in, and I'm gonna add some automation. I am gonna do that with, I'm gonna try filter first. So let's try to adjust the filter. I'm gonna bring it all the way up and then bring this note at the end all the way down. And just so that we can have a clean ending here, I'm gonna extend this loop just to play the first note of the phrase. Same with the piano. 
Same with the drone. And then we are gonna have those notes end instead of just cutting off. And I'll let them hang. The next step would be to go ahead and create more sections and to flush out this arrangement to be a full three to four minute track for either a rapper or a singer to go over and then to do some more mixing. It's important to note that I used four tracks so that any computer that can run Ableton would have no problem running this project and I didn't use effects on any of the four instrument racks except for the effects that already came in the instrument. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you enjoy live electronic music performances, tutorials, and free sound packs, make sure you click the subscribe button. And if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.